Um, yeah, so a great opportunity um, for us to uh, come out and share um, our knowledge about the game and hopefully that impacts um, the future generation of basketballers. And so, you know, we, we can coach a number of kids, but if you guys each got, you know, eight to 10 kids, you know, the impact of two hours out here uh, coaching, it, it, it could be pretty impactful here um, in the club of, of City Beach. So thanks for City Beach for, for having us. I think it's awesome that you guys are passionate about, uh, you know, coach education. Um, I've got Jackson Muse and Seb Wilson um, helping us out today. So we thought we'd kind of split it up so you don't hear one person's voice the whole time. I'm going to talk a little bit about skill development and how we can do that in our, our training sessions. Um, I think it's important if the, if the kids feel like they're getting better in, uh, in basketball, they're going to stick with the sport a lot longer. Um, and so, uh, you know, be able to spend you know, a bit of time each training session on, on actual skill development, I think is, is, is important. As far as I know you guys get one hour a week, so you're trying to put a lot of stuff in. But also today, we wanna give you guys some practical um, things that you can actually use. So um, we're gonna give you, you know, some different variations of, of each drill. Um, and we're also, we're also recording this as well. So if uh, hopefully, if uh, technically everything goes well, you'll be able to hear us and you'll be able to see the, the video on everything. So hopefully we can give this back to you um, in case you miss something or, or you want to see, see something down, down the line as well. So Jackson is going to talk about offensive structure um, and Seb is going to talk about defense. All right, so uh, hopefully cover a lot of areas. Now, now we do only have two hours, so it's, uh, you know, we can't cover everything, but we're going to give you a, a little bit of taste of of as much as we can. So hopefully you guys get something out of it and can take that back to your teams and um, make, make basketball fun, but also we get, uh, the kids are getting, getting better with it as well. So um, one of the first things we like to do, um, and, and I understand that we've got, you know, you guys, some of you guys might be coaching under eights, under tens, all the way up to under 14. So we're gonna try and give you some variations of it, of each kind of drill that you can use to, to make it harder or easier, depending on the skill level of, um, of your kids uh, and, and who you're coaching. So one of the first things we do is learning, and it's an it's, it's important part of the, the game. And if your kids can get this part, we call it the rip through, where you actually, if you have the basketball and you're stepping by the defender, what you find is a lot of players just put the ball on the floor. All right, so they, they actually give up their first advantage um, as, a, as an offensive player. So we talk about every time you catch the ball, catch square up to the basket and then make a move. All right, so a lot of players, especially when they're learning the game, they just catch the ball and they, put the, they want to just put the ball on the floor. All right, it's like you gave them a basketball the first time, they just want to dribble. All right, catch square up and, and see the play. Um, so there, there's some things that we do with, within that that, uh, that, that encourage it. You, you know, if we're playing three on three basketball, We'll use this in some of our trainings. If they don't catch and actually square up, it's a turnover. So we give the other team a ball. Now, the first two or three times that, that might happen, but they don't want to lose the ball. So it becomes, it becomes a situation where they, they quickly realize because they're hurting their team by not actually squaring up. So there's things you can do within like a three on three, two on two environment. Um, so a simple little drill. So I might get our demonstrators out here. Um, Simple little drill. Give me two lines here, guys. I should give me yeah, yeah, one person behind each one. So you got two lines. And the first thing you're going to do, actually, let's just so we can show them. You guys come out here and face, face, face here. So I'll come out on the green line, and we're facing here. So first thing you're going to do, and it, when we're teaching the, the, uh, the rip through, first thing you're going to do is just step, and you're going to put the ball down on the outside of their right foot. Okay, so this, that's the first progression, is here and that, all right? So we might have Campbell, you come out here. Dylan, you come behind Campbell. And you guys do five reps, five reps, and then let your partner go. So you just step out, yep, put it down. Yep, good, go, good. Five, keep two hands on the basketball, yep, and go, good.
All right, good. Now you'll notice, you'll notice sometimes, and what you'll get with a lot of players, when they put the ball out, they'll put the ball on the inside of their foot. All right, so we want them to dribble on the outside. All right, so we're dribbling on the outside. Now, now you're gonna dribble out just past there. So you're gonna go two dribbles, jump stop, pivot, and then throw back to your partner. I'll be your partner. Um, all right, so we're dribbling. That's uh, go. Dribble, jump stop, pivot, good. Good. All right, now freeze, good. Now obviously we just only went to the right, but to save time, you can go, you're gonna go to the left. And then there's variations out of it. You can go shot fake into a rip through. All right, you can do jabs, come back, and then go again. All right, so you can kind of up that, but it's just a good little warm up, footwork, really important in the game of basketball, and it'll lead into the, the next thing. But we find the players that can expand their game, get really good at the rip through first. All right, because it's kind of the, that first, uh, that first move that if you become really good at when you're young, it kind of can expand your game. So we're gonna go, we call this our finish series um, and a great way to kind of start, um, start the session. Um, and we, what we found is by doing this, it carries over into the, the game quite a bit. Kids, um, kids learn how to finish at the rim. Um, so what I'll do, now if you only have three or four players, you might just do one line. Um, we've got seven, so we might go two players on the baseline. So we've got, yeah, that's fine. We might get one more basketball. Actually, Jake and Campbell, can you go grab a ball out of there? Um, so let's go two lines on the baseline. We're gonna go shot fake into the rip through and finish. Yeah, two foot, two foot finish at the rim. All right, so what happens out of this? It's a pass. You got one player that starts without the basketball. They're gonna close out. Now, in this, close it out, pass it out, Nathan. Freeze, good, good, good. What you find sometimes is the players will come all the way too close, all right? So it's, it's also a defensive drill, but Nathan's just playing token D. Marley, you're gonna shot fake, and then Marley, now freeze. Notice right there, that's where the rip through comes in, all right? You'll find a lot of players will go here and then put the ball without taking that right foot. All right, so they're going here, all right? And we're stopping and we're finishing at the, at the rim. All right, Cruz is gonna do the same thing, but he's going to the left, all right? Now, if you only got four players, you might just start on the right side and then come to the left side, all right? So let's just see how, let's go back. Nathan, let's see how this, let's see how this looks. Good, good, and you're going at the same time Aston, good pass. So two foot, two foot finish there, Campbell. All right, freeze, guys. Now, one, one of the things I'll, I'll say is, especially when they're younger, they may not feel comfortable finishing with the left hand. Um, well, what I say is encourage that because the only way they're gonna get better, I, as, obviously as they grow and get stronger, their, their offhand, which for most of them is gonna be the left hand, is gonna get better. But if, you, if you'll encourage it, and you know, in this environment, there's no, there's no consequence to failing, all right? So, you know, you, you, you miss a left-hand layup, that's fine. There, you know, there's, there's, the game's not on the line. This is, this is where you kind of want to encourage them to expand their game. Um, and, and the other thing you'll, you'll want to do as they get the feel for this, start making it a little bit more competitive. So you might go two sides, first group to make six, all right? So we've got a few different finishes we do out of it. I'll show them to you real quick. 
um, so you get a feel. So uh, we've got a, a little bit to cover, um, but I want to just show the different variations that you can do out of this as your players progress. Obviously, that was a two-foot finish. You could just do normal right-left finish as well. You know, if they're just starting out, just getting them feeling. But this is a great one. The other thing that it's really good for them to learn when to go by the defender. All right, so a lot of players will catch and just go. But you actually want the player to kind of close out. Once they get into that little sweet spot, then you're able to rip by and go by. So let's go into, let's go into our Euro step now. Okay, so the Euro step, we're stepping one side and then coming, coming back. All right, so pass it out. We'll go into the Euro step. Shot fake, good, one, two, and they're going by. Yep, go. All right, good job. All right, let's go into our spin move now. All right, into our spin move. So going into the spin. All right, now just freeze there. Now pretty, pretty good with that. Um, one thing I will say about the spin move, let me see ball, Dylan, is whatever hand, it's always in the outside hand, and you take a dribble, and then you're throwing this leg back. All right? So you're, you're, you almost kind of tell them to stop, throw that, and then what a mistake a lot of players will do, they'll get here, and then they'll pick it up with two hands, and then they'll go, and that'll be a travel. All right, so take that dribble, spin back, get, get there. Now, th this is a pretty advanced move, but I just want to show you and just expose, throw it out there to the kids, all right? They want to feel that they're, they're getting better, and, you know, if, even if they're doing it wrong, you just correct them, let them, let them go through, make, make mistakes, and then eventually it'll, it'll click for them. Um, some of these guys have been doing this for a little while, so it looks... It looks clean, all right? Um, last one, last one, let's do, we call this the pro hop, all right? And this one's probably even harder to get, but you're basically dribbling and then picking up and you're going side to side. So you'd use it. So let's go, let me see ball cruise. Throw it out there, Aston. Go, yep. And so Cruz is trying to go side to side. He's got, you got a defender in front and you're going to the side. All right, here we go. Good, good. Good job. Good, good. All right, hold up. So you got a few different finishes you got out of that. I like it when you got two sides going. It's a little bit chaotic, a little bit just like a game. All right, you got bodies flying, basketballs going everywhere. Um, they've got to kind of deal with that and figure out how. Now, now after they've learned some different finishes, now we'll play a little one-on-one -on -one game out of it. And so then they get to use those finish against a real live defender. All right. And what I'll, we'll do as well is we might have, we might give them points. So if they do a spin move, they might get two points. So you're just trying to, trying to encourage them to use some of those moves. If they go a two foot finish, you might give them two points. Or if they use a pro hop. So if they use any of the finishes we just worked on, they might. So here's how it's gonna work. Let's go this line, you, let's go. You got the basketball this line and you guys are on defense. So partner up with someone. 
You guys gonna come out to the block cruise? Uh, let's go, Marley and Nathan, you guys go together. You're gonna be down on the block. So you got the one-on-one. -on -one. So hold up, Nathan, you got a basket. Uh, let's go, Cruz, Cruz, you go against Dylan. Marley, you go against Nathan. So the basketball's over there. Come in your right, Cruz, you're right there. You're on defense. So Cruz is gonna be on offense. He's gotta go around this cone. Dylan's on defense, he's gotta run around that cone. Cruz starts the drill, and then you're finishing at the rim. All right, and then as soon as they're done, Nathan, you stepping up, Marley, you're stepping up, you're going, and go. So spin move, Cruz gets two points. Here we go, Nathan. Good, and here we go, Aston. Nice finish, nice finish. So just the thing I'll say is the offensive player starts the drill. All right, so the offensive player starts the drill. Cruz, you're, you're going behind the, whenever you, Jake. Here we go, Dale. Good job. All right, good job, all right. So, then you, you might do it to the other block and you might play the first one to four baskets or something competitive that they, they like to, you know, anytime you can take a drill and keep score and make it competitive, it's fun. Um, you might mix up who they, who they go against, um, but it's just a way for them to kind of experiment with some of the finishes. All right, and so if you, if you follow the, you know, we, we like the, um, the finishing series for the pass out, follow that up with that, you know, over a season, you'll see them start to develop and get the confidence of taking a player one-on-one. -on -one. Um, you know, I, I grew up in the U.S. and you'll drive down the, uh, the neighborhoods over there and you'll see kids out on the driveways just playing one-on-one. -on -one. I don't know now that you've got a PS4 and, and iPhones. I don't know if that still happens. I suspect it does. Um, but, you know, I, I don't think kids get enough playing one-on-one. -on -one. So the more, you know, that's when they can kind of experiment, see what works, what doesn't work, what works against a, a taller defender, what works against a, a smaller defender, all right? So, then, and kids, kids like it, all right? They like to play one-on-one. -on -one. It's, it's part of, I think, the appeal of, of basketball. Um, so if you can throw in a one-on-one, -on -one, I'll give you a couple different variations um, of one-on-one -on -one stuff that you can use, but if you could throw in, we well, even in our training sometimes, we'll just say five minutes and we'll throw out a one-on-one -on -one game to start, start the, the day, keep a score and see, um, see who, who, who wins, who competes, and it's just a way to, to play. It's a great way to start the, the session as well. Kids will get there early because they know they're gonna have a one-on-one -on -one competition. Um, so one of the other things we, we talk about um, is finishing is, is in the layups. Um, and we use, we'll use the dots. I think, we, you know, we run a lot of schools programs, so we're teaching year one, year twos. We'll use the actual dots to get the right, left footwork. Um, but once they kind of get the feel of that, or even before they got it down, I like to throw a live defender in, and that's when you start to see them um, being confident to make the layups when they get into a game situation. So one of the ways that we do this, um, and I'll have you guys demonstrate, can I get the two lines, you guys coming up to the black line, and we're gonna do the contested layup drill. Um, I like, once they got their right hand, I like to do a lot of left hand or off hand finish, so let's go, give me, um, Marley, go Nathan right here. Put the ball on his arm. You guys are facing, put the ball on his arm. You got the ball, Marley. You got the ball, you're facing here. 
put the ball. Now Marley's got to go around this cone. Nathan's got to go around that cone. All right, now Nathan, you've got to contest without fouling. All right, and we'll see, we'll go say first two, let's go first to two. All right, make sure when you finish, you guys go to the outside and the next one up. Sound good? Go. Offensive player starts the drill. Good, here we go. There you go. Dylan, you got to go around the cone. Yep, yeah, mix it up. Who, who's your partner? So, Jake, we're working on left hand lap, so you got to go finish. Good. Good job. Now, just freeze it there. It's a great way. It's a great way because they know there's a defender there and they're going to go at speed. All right, so a lot of times players, when you're working on two hand or two line layups at the start of the game, they'll, um, you know, they'll just kind of go in their comfortable pace. But when they know they got a defender, when you got a guy as tall as Nathan sprinting to come block your shot, you're going to go a little bit quicker, all right, to go finish, which replicates what's going to happen in a game. Um, so a couple other variations that we like. Give me, you guys give me on the side line, one on the green line, one on the black line, all right? This one's good. So, uh, so the defender on the black line behind him. Yep. They've got to you come over here. Sorry, Marley. Yeah, well, I probably would like to go left hand, but I already set him up on the right hand. All right. So this one's good because a lot of times in the game, a, a player will get three or four dribbles before they go score. All right. So can they dribble and then go finish with a defender chasing them down? All right. So Cruz has to go around me. Campbell has to go around me on this side. What you'll find is players will try and cheat and go on the inside, all right? Cruz starts the drill. Here we go. Good. Ready up, Jake? Who's up next? Dylan, you go. Grab the ball. Aston, you're defending him. There you go, Cruz. Cruz, you go get Nathan. Good job. All right, hold up. So we can get on. Last one. Last one I'll just show you. I like this one. Jake, you start at the black line. Uh, no, Nathan, you got the ball right here. So you guys just come up here two lines. You're gonna pass. You're gonna pass to Jake, and as that happens, Jake's gonna catch, and you're going to the rim and finishing. All right, with and you're playing defense, Nathan. All right, come back. Now you can vary the distance of this depending on your skill level. So if they need a little bit more time, you might make the defender. You might use a cone, have the defender farther back, or use the line halfway line and the black line. All right, so you can kind of vary it depending on. What you want, you want the offensive player to have more success than failure, okay? But you want, the, you want to, to have, all right, let's see how it goes. All right, so now hold up. Now let's go defense, gonna be at half court and you're there. So I, I, I don't know if you guys noticed, but now the defenders are trying to be clever and they're actually throwing the basketball behind the guy. So he has to wait for the ball, right? Now you guys throw it out in front of him, okay? Throw it out in front of him.
or they might throw a slow pass like Jake just did right there. But you can see, so just freeze right there, guys. You can see as soon as you throw, they're making a lot less layups than if you guys just went and did two line layups. All right, but they're going to get better and have more confidence when they get into a game and they've got a, a guy chasing, chasing them down. All right, so I just want to th show you a few one-on-one -on -one, um, games as well that we, we like to play. So, you know, in a, in a training session, yeah, and then I'll take, some, I'll take a few questions there the last five minutes. Um, in a training session, we'd like to, you know, do a finishing series, um, play a little one-on-one, -on -one, work on a left-hand layup, all right? So you might pick two or three skills you want to work on that training session, or you might say, oh, this is what we want to get better over the whole season, all right? And you, you just kind of vary it through, throughout that. I mean, if you try and get better at 10 different skills, you'll probably get better at none. All right, so if you pick two or three, and then the others will just get better naturally through, you know, your offensive gameplay, your defensive structures, and that type of thing. So I'll just show you a few different variations of one-on-one -on -one that we like to play. And I like to give the offensive player an advantage, um, and then it gives them a chance to kind of figure it out. So the first one, first one, we call this one-on-one -on -one snatch, okay? So um, if you got the basketball, Cruz and let's say Aston, right here. Cruz is going to be on defense. Aston, you're facing him side on side. You're holding the ball out, Cruz. And so you just hold it out, one hand. Yep. And it's, the, the game starts when Aston gets the ball. Now, what we teach is if Aston is in front of Cruz, he wants to cut him off. All right. If Cruz is on the side of him, he wants to take a hit Try and go, be physical with them and then go finish. Let's see how it looks. Good. So Aston cut him off there because he was in front. Let's go next one up. Defense on the inside, offense on the outside. Here we go, Campbell. Oh, no, no start, start on the, uh, we're going to start on the three-point line right there. Yep. Good, good. Here we go. Up next, guys. Good. So Cruz cut him off there. And that's where Dylan went into him because he was on the side of him. All right. All right. Good job. All right. So, and you can vary that on different spots on the court. So you could go to the top, you could go to the wing, you could even go in the corner. All right. Really good. Um, next one is going to be ball on their back. Okay. So ball on their back. Now, this is where defense, they'll try and cheat, so they'll, they'll look behind and try. And, I tell them, look at the rim. You got to step forward. Yep, Cruz has to put the ball in the back. Now, Aston can't move until the ball is taken off. Good. Good, here we go. So they're clever. Marley's done this. He throw a little fake in there. Good, good. All right, hold up. This is one of my favorite ones. All right. So let's go. Aston, you've done this. Cruz, you come up here. Aston, you're on offense. Cruz, you're on D. All right. We call this jab one-on-one, -on -one, face around. Cruz has to be within defensive position with him. Now Cruz, maximum of four fakes. Now, here's how the game works. If Cruz moves on Aston's jab, it's one point to Aston. Now he could rack up four points out of this. If Aston scores, he gets a point. If Cruz gets a stop, he gets a point. All right, let's see how it looks. Oh, that's a point for Aston. Keep going. Another point. Good, good. Next one up. Next one up. So you're jabbing. You're trying to get them off. So it's trying to encourage really hard jabs. Yep, there's a point. Now another point. Another point. 
So there's three points plus another point for, for Jake right there. Oh, there you go, point. Another point. Another point. Oh, another point. Only four fakes still. Oh, point. All right. Now I just want to show one more out of this that you can do two on two. Jackson's telling me I got to wrap it up. I'm cutting into his time at the moment, but I just want to show how you can then take some of these one-on-one -on -one stuff and then move it into two-on-two, three-on-three, -three, so you got an advantage. So give me the two-on-two, -two, ball on their back, and let's go cruise and Aston under the basket without the basketball. So let's go, let's go, let's go, Dylan, you go offense. Campbell, you're on D, ball on their back. Uh, let's go, Cruz, you're on D, Aston, you're on offense with, with Dylan. So Dylan and Aston, who's the, under the basket, is on offense. Cruz, put your hand up, Cruz, and Campbell are on defense. All right, so it's two on two with the vantage. All right, let's see how we go. Good, now Cruz read it, all right, go again. So go one more time, one more time. Start a little bit higher, Dylan. You got to start at the black line. All right. Good. All right, freeze right there. I'll just show that to you. Now it adds decision making. You saw the first time Dylan passed it and it hit uh, Cruz's leg. He, Cruz did a pretty good job. Second time, Cruz stayed with Aston. Dylan read it, went and, went and took the shot. All right, so you, now you're adding in skill, but then you're adding in some decision making. Um, and then you could just, just keep rotating, rotating that. All right, so um, one of the things you, you want your players to be able to make decisions while they're out on the court. The more skill they get, they will make better decisions, but you can throw in some decision making into it. Um, I think that's all I've got at the moment. Are there any questions or anything you want me to kind of clarify or anything that we just went through over there? Look, I think, I think, you know, getting the layups, right? Getting the footwork um, on the layups. And then, and then and playing a little bit of one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so they get, a, get some confidence taken on. Um, you know, there's also uh, working on their offhand dribbling. You know, I think if, if you've got kids that, you know, playing domestic that eventually want to go on and play wobble, um, they got to be able to dribble with both hands. So doing, um, you know, one of the good, good ones I do, it's almost kind of the theory of overtraining. So a lot of players with their, with their left hand, they just hit the ball. So we'll do 20 or 30 seconds where they actually got to pound, and we tell them almost trying to break the wood. All right, so you're pounding, all right? And so you're getting a feel for that, but they're over, over pounding. And, and by doing that, they'll eventually, their left hand, or for most of them, or it could be their right if they're a lefty, will become stronger out of that. So you might do, you, you might even start with 10 seconds and then their partner goes and you just kind of go back and forth. But it's a good way to kind of build up that, that offhand. Um, so you might even spend a little bit of that time, but a great question. Sure. Yep. It's going to look, I think they're both, they're both effective. Um, I think, you know, probably domestic level, you keep it simple. Um, and if they can, if they can develop that, but obviously when you catch, you know, this is really effective. Actually, one of my favorite moves was when I played was going cross. So both are good. I just think it, if you can keep it, keep it simple at the start and then you can, you can advance into into both of them. I think one of the things you do want to talk. So Jordy, you might be come up here. Is when you are playing, you want to talk to your players about tacking. If you're on defense, 
tacking their hips, okay? So a lot, of, a lot of beginner players, if I'm trying to get by Jordy, I actually go sideways and Jordy can stay with me. But if Jordy come out here, you stand on the black line. If I get here and I attack his hip, as soon as I get by his hip, he's, he's, he's in trouble. Now we're going on to the second line of defense. All right, so we talk about hip. Um, so when, when they're ripped through, you're trying to go right, right by their hip. So if you, um, if you wanna, wanna teach that, that's uh, talk about attacking the, the other team's players' hips. Any other questions? No? I was going to hopefully get to how we teach the kids how to dunk, but looks like we're, um, we're, we're down on time. So I might, um, no, hopefully you guys got something, something out of that. There's, there's more variations that you can, you can do um, out of that and obviously um, I'll just mention one minute before before who's Seb you up next uh, one minute before that is that if you're gonna do sh with shooting I like to actually throw it into as they get older make the shooting so it's not just catch and shoot but it might be out of like a say a dribble handoff so you dribble handoff and then into the shot or it might be an action where they drive jump stop and then kick out to a shooter. So it's not just catch and shoot stuff, but it's actually game action where they're, they're, they're working on actually a move into passing into a shot. So you're kind of working on two or three things. So if you can get your drills, and I didn't go over much dribbling because I figured you guys could probably get on YouTube or something and, and get some good dribbling drills, but I wanted you to throw some one-on-one -on -one, um, and those type of things that I think um, too, that I think the kids, kids enjoy that stuff. Um, so, you know, if you can spend 15, 20 minutes of skill development and they feel like they're getting better and you can show them, hey, this is where you were with the left hand at the start of the year and look where you're at now, you're making left hand layups in a game. I think that they, they, they feel like, you know, every, the, the training that they're doing is, is getting them better. So, now thanks for that. I might uh, give the mic over to, uh, to Seb. And